everybody. Welcome back. I'm Lisa Larson, animal communicator, and I'm here with Alicia Alatriste. How are you doing, Alicia? Hi, Lisa. How are you? Pretty good. Um, I want to apologize to you guys because I know we've been doing this series on euthanasia and we should have posted something a couple of weeks ago but we had some technical difficulties and some personal difficulties so we just didn't get around to it but we will persevere so um the last episode we tried to prepare you for the process of helping lift your animal up and know what the process of having the vet come over is like and and what it's like to lift them up to the spirit world and today what we want to talk about is those initial days like once the vet leaves that day the vet leaves and those, those initial days what you're going to be doing what you're going to be feeling things to how how to deal with those things and that's what we're we're focused on today Okay, that, that sounds great. Yeah, before we get to that, I was um, thinking if you can share when you talk to the dog, to the vet about the, you know, the, um, the shots. Yeah, I, I talked to a vet and she does nothing but home euthanasia and she was great. Um, and she explained to me um, that the first shot, when I told you that there's two shots, well, in fact, there are three ingredients in that first shot. One is an anti-anxiety medication, one is a pain medication, and one is a sleeping medication. And um, I believe she said it was the sleeping medication, if you remember, when I talked about sometimes animals might get a little anxious from the first shot or look like they're frightened or something, she says, mostly that happens with cats who are pretty alert and maybe smaller dogs like chihuahuas. It doesn't happen with everybody, but she's, a, she's aware that she thinks that it's the sleeping medication that, that the animals react to. So there are some options, for instance, you can ask to uh, have just the anti-anxiety and the pain medication given first. Now that means there will be another needle stick, but you know, you're, you're kind of making those decisions. Personally, I think I would do that because they're already getting pain medications. So the ne second needle stick shouldn't be as much, but the second needle stick would be the, the sleeping medication that puts them to sleep before they give them the shot that stops their heart. So I, I think in the last episode, I even said, you, you know, I think I even put in the bottom in the b lower third that you can ask for, um, you know, an anti-anxiety medication first. And, and there's, problems with asking for it before that, before that vet comes over, but you can ask them to separate those, those medications out if you feel that, that your cat or dog would, you know, might react to that. So I did want to uh, address that and I thank you for t talking. And there's a couple of other things, Alicia, that you and I had spoken about that, that I wanted to mention is making sure we, we kind of looked at the heels of it and said, have somebody there with you. But I don't think I pressed it hard enough that it's really important to have someone close to you to help you through the process. If you live alone, maybe have somebody that's really close to you stay the night with you. And, I'm, and when I say somebody close to you, I'm talking about somebody that you don't have to talk to if you don't want to, that you can just be in their company. You know what I mean? Those type of people. Um, and, you know, because it's going to be, as we're going to talk about today, it's going to be hard once that, once that leaves. So you want somebody there to help you through that process, but also who will stay with you. And the other thing is, I don't think we mentioned, is making sure that um, if you have other animals in the house, make sure to let them see the body of the animal who is transitioning, because it helps them deal with it. And you can prepare them for it by telling them in your own words or having a communicator tell them 
you know, either before or after, you know, but always remember that, that those, those animals who are remaining, they've got a bit of confusion. They're going through their grief. And, you know, I, I'm sure that we will end up talking about that as well in this, uh, episode, which I'm calling dealing with the aftermath and that, and that, that initial aftermath because you know, Alicia, how hard that is. It's, it's, it's hard on everybody, whether we've been through it a million times or whether we've only been through it, you know, whether it's our first time. I have, um, when, when Chiki passed, I had a, a, um, a, my best friend as a support so that she took off everything and I didn't have to think about anything. Yeah, can you give us some tips when, uh, what to do when the vet leaves with the body? And you are all alone and you don't know what to do because we get confused and we are yeah. lost, you know? Yeah, you we are. We're completely lost. Yeah. So, you know, that's why I said have that support. You know, I mean, you, you know, I know that when I am working with somebody and I'm, I'm helping that animal cross, I will always tell them I'm not going to call you afterwards because I figure they're not going to want to talk to me. You know, I mean, I will I'll I'll write them an email and I'll say when you're ready, you can call me. But, you know, you want to have somebody close by with you that you can just be with. And I think that's really important too. somebody you don't have to talk to somebody you don't have to explain yourself to. Um, you know, and, and it's going to be hard to sleep that night. Yeah. You, you know, I mean, do, depending on what time you have it done. Uh, I mean, if, if it's earlier on in the day, maybe you can go out and take a walk in nature, whatever, if it's later on in the day, um, you know, if you don't have a substance abuse problem, I want to make sure that clear there, but if you have, you know, if you want to have a glass of wine, if you have, you know, a prescription for anti-anxiety meds like Valium or something, and if you don't have any of that stuff or you don't, you don't, you do have a substance abuse problem, there are other things like, um, tryptophan is a naturally occurring amino acid in the body and calms you down. Valerian root is something that's kind of a natural anti-anxiety. And knowing that your, your animal is there and knowing that your animal is out of pain and not suffering. Yeah, definitely. And, and what, what else uh, do you suggest to go um, through the, the following uh, days? when, you know, when you don't have the, your pet already with you anymore. Yeah. And, and, and I think that's, that's where I say, like, you know, first of all, if, if you work, there's nothing wrong with, if you can do it, take some time off from work. I mean, you've had a death in the family. Now, uh, other people might look at that and, and say, oh, it's not the same thing. Well, it is. You know, you have had a death in the family. Your, ch your child has gone away, you know? So if you have the, it, you know, if you can afford it, if you have the sick time, if you're able to take some time off work, um, you know, maybe, like I say, go take a walk out in nature, be, be away from everything that makes you, that reminds you of your animal you know um do little things like i remember when cuba passed we went to the beach and and i have pictures i i you know we drew a big heart you know in the sand and wrote his name and you know and we did a little honoring of that to him you know and picked up rocks that we have to this day that that meant meant something to us and you know, I mean, of course, if you have animals left in the house, you need to, to, you know, split your time and make sure that they're not feeling left alone. But so you have to take care of yourself and do the things that you need to do, but you also need to be there for them as well and, uh, and, and, and honoring their grief. But I think, you know, just taking care of yourself and taking some time for yourself, don't just sit and wallow 
You know, I mean, that's the easiest thing to do is to just sit and wallow. But those first few days, even, you know, I mean, think of this, if you've ever had a human in your life pass, you know, I mean, of course, humans, everybody, you know, comes over and, you know, those first few days, the, the first day, especially your house is filled with people and stuff like that. Well, it's not going to be like that. But, you know, if you can have, a, you know, some a few close friends or one close friend be, be with you, um, you know, to to just those first few days you just have to keep it you, you're never going to keep your mind off of things but sometimes you need that distraction by going out and being in nature and and i don't even want to call it a distraction because you're not going to be not thinking of them but it it's it's a way to process it if if you're someplace where you can you know you know if you can stay busy in in something that you're doing that that makes you happy you know take things day by day without no rush it's okay to feel pain yes it's okay to feel pain it's okay to accept it mm -hmm. and just because somebody tells you it's not you know oh a million times, how many times did you hear after after Cheeky's died? How many times did you hear it's just a it's just a cat? You know, why are you being so overly reactive? It's just a cat. No, it's not just a cat. In fact, I was filling out uh, something today. The vet we have a home vet, and she's going to be coming over. And I loved the the intake form because she said what do you think of your animal? Is your animal your child, a <laughs> beloved family member, just, an, just a pet? <laughs> you know, I mean, she had this whole, of course, I didn't even read the rest of them because it's like all my animals are my kids, you know? So, you know, and the people, I'm assuming the people that are watching this, that's how you feel as well. And I hate to use the word should, but, you know, yeah. you know we, we adopt them and they are our children. So um, just because somebody else doesn't understand it, just ignore it. You know, you understand that if for nothing else, if for nothing else, you know that you have two people who understand you, and that's me and Alicia. Yes. <laughs> hey, I'm talking to you right here, right now. You who are feeling like you have nobody that understands how, how you are feeling about the loss of your animal. And you have at least two people right here, me and Alicia. So, you know, don't, don't even give those people the time of day. They, they don't understand. They could never understand. And your pain is your pain. Your grief is your grief. And, in, and it's real. And it's legitimate. And it's valid. Yes. And also, at the th um, uh, there is going to be a point that we'll receive the ashes. So can you explain a little bit what to expect? When they when we receive the ashes um yeah you know i mean i think there's going to be a period of time before that you know because sometimes it can be up to two weeks you know a week or two before you can re receive the ashes and and i i just want to underscore that in those two weeks before you receive the ashes you really need to take things day by day you know, there's going to be, you know, it's it's going to be a blur for you. I mean, if you can wake up and take a shower, that's going to be, you know, <laughs> that's going to be a, a, a big thing right there. If you can get up and take a shower and start your day, then that's really important. And um, you do what you need to do moment by moment because the that time in between the time that they take the to their your your animals ash your animal's body away and the time that you receive the ashes is a real weird 
spot you know i mean i know that when we finally got kuba's ashes back i felt like oh he's he's finally coming home but those two weeks in between it's very odd you know i mean there's there it's it's you're you're kind of off center so you want to make sure that you do what you need to do moment by moment and don't rush to throw things away. You know, some people will rush or some people will push you into rushing to get rid of all their things and and get past what you, you know, what is gonna take way longer than what they want for you to get past. Um, So regardless of their advice, they're gonna tell you right away to go get another animal Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, if if your if your human child passed, would you if if somebody's human child passed, would you tell them just go down to the orphanage and get another one? <laughs> no, you would not. It's your child. You have to grieve your child, and you know that's the one thing that's that's different with with um human beings i think uh if i remember correctly we like when my dad died i thought we got his ashes back pretty quickly i mean when when a human being dies you kind of go through that process the memorial process and all of those things pretty quickly and you have a lot of people around and all of this stuff but with an animal you've got it's you know you maybe got a somebody that helps you the first day and then you've got these like two weeks before you get the ashes back and you're just like you don't really know you know what to do so you know don't just know that you you don't have to rush into anything and when that time does come to pick up their ashes I you maybe you can have if you can't do it maybe you can find somebody to go pick them up for you now, Alicia, I know you said that that in your case, the vet brought them to your home. Exactly. Uh, the vet uh, brought us the, the ashes. Yeah. So I've never had that experience. Uh, and I think the only time I ever remember picking up ashes was when I did it for my mom. Every time that I've had to do it, it's somebody's done it for me. My husband has done it or my mom's done it for me um it's a it's a it's a very difficult thing to do but like i say um you know i remember when kuba came home i i remember waiting for michael to get home because i just i got that little box and it's it's so traumatic but i just felt like he was home Mm -hmm. you know So so if you can so if you can switch it the you know switch it so that you can think of it like that it's important and and you know it's important too that um i suppose we talked about some of this the last time did we talk the last time about the boxes and the different types of boxes you know i think that we were going to uh, talk up in this uh, podcast yeah well so that's another thing that you you know i mean you're gonna need to tell them tell the vet before they take the body um and i'm sorry that some of this stuff got pushed over to this one but we do want to cover it you know in the olden days when i first started having to euthanize my animals you just get them back back in this ugly metal box and i mean it's actually the same my dad it was it was actually the same type of box as i got my dad's ashes back but now more often they'll come in this like wooden box and and they'll ask you before you tell them yes i want them cremated or whatever some of them they will engrave their names on it so they're really nice so it's one of those things well you know i used to go and bury the ashes or scatter the ashes and then not know what to do with the box well now the box is so nice you can make an altar with it you know you can put their pictures up but 
even more new is if it's something that you would want to do something with berry or spread their ashes, there are biodegradable boxes as well. And, you know, they, you know, you might have to order them in advance. I don't think they're, they're standard at any place, but you can ask for them. But I know that, for instance, I have my two cats, Kuba and Makana. We have a, an altar for them. And we actually have it in our wills that when I die, that I'm going to be buried, well, cremated and buried. My, all of our ashes are going to be scattered together. Yeah, when I received Chiki's ashes, I made an altar. I uh, light a candle to her. Oh, that's nice. So, you know, and, um, but uh, yes, I, I think that um, the grieving part um, is very difficult for most of us. And having a podcast like this and um, podcasts and, and, you know, and people like that, that are educated like you telling us what to expect, that helps us a lot. And I really uh, appreciate that. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. And so you have an altar. Do you have any plans for what, ha I mean, do you have a will? Do you have anything that, what happens to Cheeky when something happens to you? No, but I, I told everybody that when I die, I want her ashes with me. Yeah. 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 And, you know, and there are other things too, you know, like I say, I used to go and bury my ashes, the, my cat's ashes, and then I would plant a tree over them so that I always, there was something always growing. But there are some people like there are places now that, you know, you can get, um, you can get jewelry or gems made out of the ashes. Now, this isn't my thing, really. But some people, yeah, I mean, it, it's just a personal thing, but they make really beautiful things. They make blown glass things. They make little jewelry. Um, some things, they can be just like a little piece of jewelry where there's some of the ashes are in it. Mm -hmm. Some things that the jewelry is actually made out of the ashes. So, you know, you have a lot of options if you, if that's something that, that is, you know, that feels right to you, that you feel like you would always carry them around with you, then you can, you can do that too. But know that there are all of these options around, you know, I mean, there's just a lot of different options for what you can do. Also, in my case, I have a chickies hair in one of the little yeah, things. Yeah, the fur. I got some fur makana as well. Yeah. In the little thing. And, um, yeah, you can get it made into like little it's I, don't uh, I forget what it's called it's not plastic it's resin but, uh -huh. yeah they put like in a resin they make a resin jewelry out of it or something like that yeah that, yeah, yeah that, that's awesome it's important and you know i mean it's you know years down the line it, it, you know you may you know, be in a different place, but every once in a while you run across that little box that you have their fur in or something. And, and, and it's important, you know, it, if it's important to you, you know, just make sure to, to do what's important to you. Yes. And um, for example, I had the hair next to me and plus the, the box and, and all these a master like Buddha and Jesus and everybody's there. <laughs> yeah, it, it's going to be personal for everybody. Yes. So I know that we had you had a lot of uh, videos about grieving. Where can we go and find your your, your videos of grieving? Yeah. So um, yeah, I've done a lot of grieving videos where we're talking about grieving as a whole, as opposed to what we're talking about here, which is just, you know, the the immediate aftermath. And I will link those in the description below. There's also, I also have a, um, a blog post. I think it's called 12... 12 things that you can do to get over the loss of a pet or something like that. And I really need to change pet to animal, but you know, that was a long time ago. Um, but it's, you know, it just gives you some tips on things to do and to help you. I mean, we've, 
I've, I've done a lot of those. I'm sure we'll do a lot more on, on grieving, but yeah, I will, I will post those in the district description and you can, and you can look through my videos as well. You know, you can go to the videos tab mm -hmm. on my YouTube. Okay. And where can we uh, find your book? Um, yeah, my book is called Pause Talking, A Course in Communicating with Animals. And yes, we can, you can find that, that on, on Amazon and Apple Books. And as far as contacting me personally, you can find me at pausetalk.net. Thank you, Lisa. That's amazing. <laughs> thank you. Okay, sweetie. Well, you guys, thank you so much. I hope this has given you some of the information that you need. Um, and we're looking forward to our next podcast and our next video cast. We're going to talk about once your animal is on the other side, how do you know that they're around and all of that type of stuff. So um, look forward to that. I look forward to seeing you again. If you are enjoying these video casts, please hit that like button and the subscribe. And if you want to be notified of other videos in the future, hit the bell. And, um, and we appreciate you being here and we look forward to seeing you again. So thank you, Alicia. And thank you. Thank guys you Lisa. All. Bye bye. All right. Take care. Bye bye. bye, -bye.